The interconnected crises of the economy, the climate, and the nation's democracy have never been greater. The latest hint O'Rourke was ready to run, coming in a glossy Vanity Fair spread overnight, captured by celebrity photographer Annie Leibovitz. O'Rourke saying, I'm just born to do this. Since the campaign, he's even taken followers along to the dentist. It was quite a reveal. The former Texas congressman skyrocketing onto the national political scene when a Senate race caught fire in 2018. Thank you, El Paso. Thank you, Texas. Despite his loss to Ted Cruz, the rock and roll loving 46 year old caught the nation's attention. You too. Thank you all. You're a rock star. No, no, there's just so many no, you great really people are. who you are. You can't go anywhere without getting. <laughs> All that blatantly sycophantic news coverage really got me pumped up for that salt in the sweat Robert Francis. Oh, I mean Beto. All day long today, the media has been losing its shit over the announcement that Mr. Bob Francis has joined the crowded Democrat horde for the 2020 presidential election. The common talking point I keep hearing throughout the media is that Beto is a centrist. Anytime a leftist media activist calls somebody a centrist, you should be instantly suspicious. He got a very favorable profile in Vanity Fair with a phot photograph from probably the most famous photographer on the planet, Annie Leibovitz. Annie Leibovitz so yeah. And it's worth noting that his voting record has skewed more to the center than progressive. My skepticism was confirmed when I checked out his voting record and saw that he gets an F from the NRA and a zero from the National Right to Life organization. The pro-abortion group, NARAL, gives him 100%. And beyond that, Pedro is very pro-illegal immigration and he backs calls to eliminate ICE. For God's sakes, his supporters were waving Mexican flags at his anti-wall rally, which, by the way, had large fences erected to keep people out. Nothing about this guy screams centrist to me, especially when the so-called reporter didn't even mention any of this. Take a wild guess who's going to interview him Friday. It's left-wing shill and Democrat donor Gail King. The former Texas congressman skyrocketing onto the national political scene when a Senate race caught fire in 2018. Yeah, and then he lost. It didn't matter, though, because the media for the next few days ran puff piece after puff piece at how he was a 2020 contender. It was pretty obvious that this guy is going to be one of the media favorites on the Democrat side. I did a video on it at the time, right after he lost his congressional run, with so-called journalists drooling over him and giving him the coveted label of rock star. ABC News even ran a very obvious propaganda piece for him, interviewing him at a rally and trying to pass it off as though he was just out in public and everybody loved him. You can't go 10 Thank feet without an interruption Thank from a Beto backer. Thank you so much. I love you too. Thank you all. You're a rock star. No, no, there's just so no, many great really people are. who are. You can't go anywhere without getting... Hey! hey. Whoa, I think we have a contender for sweatiest politician. The rock and roll loving 46 year old caught the nation's attention. His offbeat social media posts appealing to a younger generation, even taking a skateboarding at Whataburger. You see, they claim that he caught the nation's attention, but what she really means is that the media decided to back and promote him. This guy has no national appeal without the media's help. He's somewhat popular in Texas, which surprises the hell out of me. But on a national stage, his own party is going to eat him alive for two reasons. He's white and he's a sort of a man. Why do you think he's so attached to this Beto nickname? It deflects attention from his skin color, which is both telling of the times and completely pathetic. <laughs> he's a weasel who denies who he is in the hopes that the races in his party will give him a pass. Is it time to have somebody of color and a woman and somebody younger or somebody more establishment? But as a white guy, do you, are you trying to calculate whether or not this is the right time? For you. In my opinion, we don't need white people leading the Democratic Party right now. And my job is to shut other white people down when they want to interrupt. This is likely to appeal to younger people who lean left. It's yet another example of how the media will frame a story or a person to fit the worldview of a regressive. This is just a taste of the verbal fellatio for Democrats that we're about to see coming from the media. One thing's for sure, it's going to give me tons of material to work with. Hey, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you like my material and you agree with my message, please consider supporting me on Patreon or PayPal. You can find the link in the description or in the pinned comment. Thanks.